Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. Um, as you may know, silver and gold both have been taking a beat down today. And um, I believe, it, personally believe it's a manipulation and I've noticed a trend in what's going on. I'm going to talk to you about that in a couple of minutes here. Uh, as of the time me making this video today, silver is down uh, $1.29 at 4.06% down and uh, gold too. Gold took a hit. Gold's down $26.90, uh, 1%. So uh, it seems like lately whenever these uh, sell-offs happen, uh, silver seems to be, get hit harder uh, percentage-wise than gold does. Gold still seems stronger. But, you know, to me, once again, uh, this is probably more manipulation. Um, you know, everything is dictated by the paper markets. Uh, us silver and gold stackers, uh, we really have no say. Even the big bullion houses and the refineries and the big giant coin shops, we have no say and no influence on where the price of metals go. So we're really at the mercy uh, of whatever shenanigans they want to pull, right? So uh, to me, and I always try to tell myself this and other people that I deal with, uh, look at the big picture, uh, look at it more as a long-term thing, and just look at the facts. What are the facts? What do we know? Uh, we're, we're coming up on, what, $36 trillion in, in debt, and it's rising at a rapid pace. And uh, even with this election coming up, I don't know if there's anything either candidate could possibly do to turn this around. Uh, I just don't see... Uh, an answer for the amount of spending and where it's going. I don't think that debt can ever be paid back. And, uh, you know, my opinion is that uh, sooner or later, uh, the dollar is going to decline rapidly in value. Uh, and you have these other countries on top of it that are trying to get away from the dollar. And um, you'll see what I mean a little bit as I go on. There's one article specifically I want to bring up that I think has probably affected uh, really the price of gold and silver. Um, now, whether or not you believe this article, which I do not believe it, uh, you know, for the paper markets, it definitely affects it. Uh, China, China's central bank purchases no gold for fifth straight month in September. So according to this article, uh, the Chinese stopped buying gold. Uh, the Chinese central bank has stopped buying gold back in uh, May. And this is like the fifth straight month. They haven't continued to buy any gold, which the news comes out and the paper markets see that and they react and it pushes the prices down, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you really believe that the Chinese central bank just stopped buying gold and they would even release the truthful information, uh, I got you know some ice to sell you in winter. I mean, to me, I think it's baloney. Uh, I don't believe it at all. I wouldn't trust anything they say. I still believe that they're buying gold. Uh, what I, I believe they probably want the price to drop, absolutely, because if they're actively trying to uh, add to their gold reserves, these other countries, um, why would they want the price to be higher? Why? You know, so to me that's a form of manipulation and you know whatever i think these countries are definitely trying to get away from the dollar i think they see the writing on the wall uh, i think they know more about it than we do and uh, i'm sure they'd like to pay a lower price for it uh, along with a lot of my uh, silver and gold stacker customers and friends they'd like to buy it cheaper too but at some point you know uh, when you have enough how much how much do you have how much silver and gold do you actually have that you, you get to a point where like, hey, I have enough, you know, and now I'm just gonna wait it out and see what happens. So at some point we need it to go up, right? We need it to really rise. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Here's an article that I think is very silly. Uh, gold, silver, sell off on reports, Hezbollah seek, seeking ceasefire. So uh, if you really believe that, uh, that conflict between with Israel and Hezbollah and Lebanon have anything to do with the price of metals. Uh, yeah, I am not buying it. That seems like propaganda to me. 
Um, there was a report, another report I read that Iran uh, was pushing Hezbollah to, um, you know, come up with a peace agreement with Israel. And uh, my personal belief is I don't think Israel's is going to have any peace agreements with any of these countries until they attain their goals, which they have stated is to uh, allow the people in that part of Israel to go back to their homes and uh, to stop the rocket attacks and drone attacks that have been happening every day. So, uh, you know, this, this seems like another silly uh, propaganda type article that uh, weighs heavily and negatively on silver and gold. Um, there's another one. It's like there's a slew of these articles that all come out at the same time. And, uh, you know, it seems like they're pushing the price down. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. You know, I do have a business to run here. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm making this video during uh, working hours. Uh, we've been, I've been kind of slow today, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, if someone comes to the door, obviously, i got to let them in. But here's another article. Um, I think it's kind of silly, too. Gold prices, gold prices could drop after latest NFP implies shallower rate cut path. So there's this uh, thinking right now that uh, even though we had just had the recent rate cut, that uh, the next rate cut due to economic numbers, um, it will be a smaller rate cut. They were hoping for another half a point or half a percent, whatever. Uh, so they're going to go to a quarter only. Uh, it just seems like more baloney, more propaganda, more BS, blah, blah, blah. Let's prop up the dollar. Let's prop up the dollar. When in reality, uh, we know that uh, the dollar is probably weakening. And, uh, you know, right now the, the dollar is up today and uh, the last couple of days. That's why also why the price uh, of metals are dropping. So, you know, it may be a buying opportunity. Uh, Metals can continue to drop. I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. Nobody knows the future. I've told you this in other videos. Um, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet pertaining to silver and gold. Uh, a lot of it really is geared towards silver. Um, you see these fantastical headlines on these other videos and stuff like that. Uh, silver going to 1,000 an ounce, silver to 800 an ounce. Uh, gold to 20,000, 30, 40,000. I mean, you know, if, like I said before, if that happens, uh, we're probably in a complete dollar collapse and uh, doomsday -y Mad Max scenario. So, you know, with that being said, I do believe it's going to continue to rise over time because I think it has to. I don't think it has any choice, but it's going to go and uh, whatever manipulation that's been going on or that continues to go on eventually they're not going to be able to do it anymore. That's my personal opinion. Um, you know, don't take my advice and uh, use it to, you know, invest your money into it because, uh, you know, I don't know the future along with n nobody else knows the future too when it comes to this stuff. Nobody. Just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, but I do want to talk to you about another thing today, and that is uh, uh, I was asked this question from one of the customers, and he wanted to know what I would buy personally and what, I'd be, what I'm stacking personally, my own personal stuff, not as a dealer, but as a stacker and as, uh, you know, what experiences I have seen uh, being a dealer, uh, what, that, what, what I would personally, me, uh, what I would be stacking. And I'm going to go over that with you uh, in just a minute. I'll be right back. All right, so I want to talk to you, um, I want to talk to you now about what I was just talking to you about, and that is my personal advice on what uh, I would be stacking and what I do stack personally, uh, not necessarily what I'm stacking or, or my inventory in my store. That's a totally separate thing, uh, but I'm going to give you some advice on what I stack, uh, the direction I think that you should go. Um, this is just my opinion, of course. Uh, you do whatever you think is right, because like I told you, I don't know everything. Nobody does. But, uh, you know, a couple things I want to get to. Uh, number one, uh, stuff like this is cool. I'm going to show you what it is. I bought these in the store the other day. There are some uh, one-ounce silver, uh, like DC Comics silver collectible superhero bars, little bars. They're kind of neat. Um... I think they're really cool. I mean, I like 
Superman. I like uh, Spider-Man. It's cool stuff. But as to uh, me personally buying this kind of stuff to stack it and put it away, no, no deal for me. Uh, I will never buy collectible silver like this. Uh, gimmicky collectible silver to stack. Um, because, you know, when it comes down to it, it's still just one ounce of silver. And uh, I'm not a collector. Uh, I do have some collectible stuff put away, but very little. Most of the stuff that I have is just straight silver and gold. Um, so this kind of stuff, guys, to me is ridiculous. It's a no-no. Now, if you're doing it because uh, you're, you're a collector of some sorts, I mean, a lot of guys and gals are collectors and stackers, and that's fine. But if you're, um, my advice, if you're doing it for uh, stacking silver and gold as a protection and insurance policy, then uh, I would avoid collectible silver. Now, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets a little bit tricky with stuff like this. Now, I do like these, but it's in a way uh, similar to this, uh, the collectible silver, uh, you know, silver eagles. Here's a tube of uh, silver eagles. Now, yes, these are sovereign. They're from the U.S. Mint, um, but they do carry a premium on them. And, uh, you know, I like them, and I'm in a different situation than most of you, meaning that as a dealer, if somebody walks in the door to sell me these, I'm going to get them much cheaper than you guys could buy them for yourself. So uh, that's the benefit I have as being a dealer. But... Uh, if I were just not in the business, uh, which one day I won't be, and if I continue to stack silver, um, these would not probably be uh, something I would be stacking. Um, there are some benefits to it, obviously. Uh, it's a sovereign, it's a sovereign minted item from the United States Mint, and it has a uh, actual uh, value, you know, one dollar. It's written right on it, so that's why some of the guys think that, uh, but. To me, silver is just silver, and um, as long as it's a, in a form that's recognizable, meaning one ounce, five ounce, ten ounce, clearly marked, you know, easily tested, that type of thing. Uh, for long-term stacking, my, my opinion is I stick to generic. Uh, even stuff like this, uh, these things, these are, these are cool too, proof silver eagles but they're one ounce of silver, right? And they're collectible and they're, they trade for well above the silver price. So you could probably, probably getting uh, a good idea of my mindset on silver per se. Uh, it, it applies to gold too somewhat, well, mostly. Uh, but I avoid collectible stuff like this. Like I don't want it. Um, and another thing, Generic silver, I would keep the increments at 10 ounces or less because uh, there's been some, I've had some disputes with some people about this or discussions about like the 100 ounce silver bars, for example. Uh, I've made videos about this. I do not like 100 ounce silver bars, period. Uh, even as a dealer, when somebody brings it in, I don't like 100 ounce silver bars. Um, Yes, there is a market for it. Yes, I could always take it to the refinery or to another bullion house and sell it. But normally, uh, I don't like them because they're harder to sell. They're harder to move. Um, they're also harder to verify that they're authentic. I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, I saw, there was one video I saw recently where there's a 100 ounce silver bar and they cut into it and in the middle there was tungsten in it. And I'm not sure, I don't think like, um, my, uh, excuse me, I don't think like my Sigma machine would even pick that up, okay? And uh, you could probably weigh it if you have an accurate enough scale, but uh, tungsten, the weight would be accurate apparently because tungsten is very similar in density to uh, gold and silver. So that could be a problem. But I would avoid them uh, for multiple reasons. Um, I would stick to, definitely stick to uh, smaller stuff. Five ounce bars, I really like five ounce bars. 10 ounce bars are okay. And uh, generic one ounce silver rounds are okay. 
Uh, just be careful, there's a lot of fakes out there. 90% uh, silver coins, okay? I have a bucket of 90% silver coins that I uh, let my customers pick through. You know, this stuff uh, is okay. This stuff's fine to stack, I think. Uh, it's easily identifiable. Um, a lot of times you could get good deals on it. Like in my shop right now, I'm selling it at spot. So uh, pretty much if somebody comes in the door, they're, they're uh, sell it to me, I'll pay a little bit on their spot, I'll sell it at spot, make it usually a very, very small profit on it and move on. Myself, personally, I do stack some 90% silver. Uh, especially I like dimes because of the small size, the small increment, um, easy to trade with probably in the future, easy to barter with. Uh, if it gets into a situation where we have to go out and actually trade our bullion for whatever we need, uh, the smaller the increment, I think the better. Um, and as opposed to fractional gold, where fractional gold has a huge premium on it when you go to buy it at a shop or online, uh, silver dimes, like, you know, pretty much you can get them at spot. So I would, per, I would avoid uh, silver heavily worn 90%, though, because there is some weight loss on it. Even though some of it's accounted for, I think it's, it, it, we, I did a test on this, it's not accounted enough. So uh, I would try to find better condition, you know, newer stuff if you're going to go that route. Um, here's something that's really, really one of the top of my list is ridiculous that I would never stack. Uh, graded silver eagles. Uh, to me, these are ridiculous. Uh, sometimes these graded ones, um, really, if they're like a low grade, like this is MS-69, um, you could buy these almost at the same price you could buy just loose ones. So, yeah, you'd think, okay, that's a great deal. It's a benefit. But if you're paying a big premium on these, like these uh, MS-70s or something, you're paying $60, $70 each, uh, I think that's ridiculous because uh, that's not something you should be stacking. You're more of a collector. And I can be honest with you, uh, one of my showcases over here is filled with these things. I got a whole hundreds of them in the showcase over here. And I can't tell you the last time I sold one. I really don't remember. And um, at some point here, I'm probably just going to throw them up online on eBay or something and blow them out because they don't move. So that shows you the interest in them. Um, graded silver dollars, graded Morgan dollars, graded peace dollars, things like that. Uh, these are collectibles. Okay, When they're graded, uh, they're, they're collectible, even though they're silver, they're 90% silver. Uh, but once again, if it came down to it, all you got is silver. No one's gonna care about the collectability of it. And uh, you know, I would not, as a stacker, I'm not saying you're as a collector, as a stacker, I would avoid, I would avoid this kind of stuff. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Of course, if you wanna buy some because you like it, you know, I do like these, I think they're beautiful. And I do have some put away but it's not my main goal. So I would avoid this stuff if I were you. Um, and there's one more point I want to get to. Um, and I brought this up and I got a lot of, lot of flack about it. I made some video in the past. Uh, it said, uh, sell your silver if you live in a big city. And my whole point about that was uh, if you got a lot of weight of silver, hundreds of, hundreds of pounds of silver that you've stacked over the years, and something happens, uh, it hits the fan in the city, and you got to get out of town quickly or bug out. Uh, it's very hard to move hundreds of pounds really quickly. And actually, what just happened with those poor people in North Carolina, could you imagine uh, you went off grid? You retired or you got off, out, off the uh, rat race, and uh, you moved out to the Carolinas into some rural area. You have a nice house in the mountains. You're thinking, wow, uh, you know, the weather is mild. Um, you don't get earthquakes. Uh, you're, you're very far inland, so you don't have to worry about hurricanes, blah, 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 until, of course, what just happened with a hurricane that dumped so much water, you had landslides, and entire towns were wiped out. Uh, can you imagine if you had your prepping supplies, your silver, your... your uh, your lead, your, you know, all this stuff you need to survive and survive a calamity of some kind and it's in this house and it's just washed away and you're trying to get out of Dodge quickly. How are you going to get out of Dodge with hundreds of pounds of this? It's just going to get lost and left behind and buried somewhere. 
because at that point you're running for your life. I mean, I feel terrible about what happened to those people. It's it's a tragedy, human tragedy. But you know, there is something to be said about having too much weight in silver uh, versus gold. Because, like I said in the past, gold, you know, you could have a lot of value in two handfuls and stick it in your pocket or throw it in a backpack and get out quickly. So you got to think about that. Um, I'm not telling you everybody to go out and dump all their silver right now because, uh, you know, for the future, I don't think that's smart. But, you know, you should think about, uh, depending on your location where you live and what could happen, uh, do you really want to have hundreds of pounds of silver? That's all I'm saying. Uh, if you guys would, if you have any comments about anything that I just spoke about, uh, you have any suggestions or tips for the other guys on what to stack, what not to stack, if anything I might have forgotten, um, I don't script these videos, so I'm just kind of talking, in between customers, of course. And uh, if you have any advice for everybody, please leave them in the comments below. And if you would, please like and subscribe. Give me the thumbs up. Uh, share the video if you could. It's helping me build the channel, and I appreciate you guys watching. So until next time, have a great day, guys. Thanks.